World Energy Outlook, a publication that we know all of you uh, have come to count on as a source of insights and analysis on some of the key energy trends uh, facing uh, the energy sector and some of the sort of ongoing political and these days geopolitical issues that we're discussing uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we're very, very pleased to have Fatih here. Uh, this is, uh, I don't even know how long we've been uh, hosting uh, the WIO, and it is always one of our uh, consistently uh, very, very popular events, so we're very pleased to have all of you here today. It's actually quite shocking to have as many of you here on a Thanksgiving week uh, as this, uh, so that is a real true testament uh, to the work that Fatih and his team uh, put together. So. Uh, without further ado, we'll have uh, Fonte give his presentation of the, this year's World Energy Outlook. Uh, it has a focus on uh, nuclear energy and uh, also a special report that you all put out in October, October, uh, on Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, but then also, you know, just the insights on sort of the policy direction, impacts on climate change, oil markets, uh, and all of the things that we've come to really appreciate about uh, the uh, the work that. Fatih's team uh, puts together in each of these uh, each of these reports. So we'll have a, a, a bit of a presentation, and then uh, we'll have a discussion with all of you. Uh, looking forward to it. So please uh, join me in welcoming uh, uh, Sarah. And uh, a, a very good morning to you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It is uh, always a great pleasure to come back to uh, CSIS. Uh, Sarah said it's one of our uh, favorite. Uh, events, and I can assure you that CSAS is one of our most favorite uh, venues to present uh, our outlook. We are always very happy to have this warm welcome uh, from Sarah, uh, uh, Frank, uh, Mr. Hamner, and uh, others. Now, now to the words on natural gas. We see that the natural gas is growing strongly almost everywhere in the world, and sometime soon will overtake oil as the number one fuel in the global energy mix in two decades of time or so. Now, I said everywhere, but there is one exception. It doesn't grow, which is Europe. In Europe, natural gas is in a winter sleep. We think natural gas consumption in Europe will go back to pre-2010 levels only around 2030s. Okay. So therefore, there is a big gap uh, uh, there. So, and for Europe, while the European demand will stay more or less stable, European import needs will increase significantly as a result of the huge declines in the domestic gas production. And the question is, while Europe is now today, is worried that they are getting a big chunk of their gas from one single source with the growing import needs, what to do? And one of the options here in the medium and longer term is LNG. We see that the LNG trade is increasing substantially. Today, 50% of the gas trade is made by pipelines, 50% by LNG, and we think this will grow significantly in favor of uh, LNG, mainly as a result of many LNG projects are uh, coming to a, a completion sometime soon, and not only the amount of LNG is increasing, providing flexibility uh, to, the mark, uh, to the markets from 300 to almost 600 BCM, but the, perhaps more importantly, the countries which produce LNG are increasing. So double flexibility. Lots of LNG providing flexibility, plus the, the number of countries are growing. To the current ones, we expect the US, Canada, African countries, Mozambique, Tanzania, and big projects from Australia, lots of LNG coming to the markets. This will make the hands of the consumers stronger in terms of the options they have in front of them, if they use their cards uh, cleverly. However, we do not believe that 
so much LNG coming to the markets will bring the gas prices down to the, as many people hope, to the US gas price levels. There will be still a major price gap between US and the uh, rest of the, uh, for, for Europe or uh, Japan for two reasons. One, the co capital costs of LNG, we have colleagues from uh, LNG companies here, are going up. And second, shipping gas from point A to point B is a costly business. So to bring the uh, US gas to Europe costs about six, 657 uh, uh, just to bring it uh, here plus the uh, price, about $4, is only the $11, $11. So this is, growing LNG is a very important trend, a good news for the consumers from a flexibility point of view, but the hope that the gas prices will go down uh, is not a view that we subscribe. 